Hi everyone, my name is Elena and today I'm going to talk to you about a popular neuromyth called the Mozart effect. Now, before I start, it's important that I tell you what a neuromyth is. A neuromyth is a commonly held false belief about how the mind and brain function. You may have heard that humans only use 10% of their brain while conscious, or that people are either left-brained or right-brained. These are examples of neuromyths, and today I'm going to talk to you about a popular one called the Mozart Effect. The Mozart Effect is an incorrect theory that listening to Mozart or classical music can make you smarter. This theory is often associated with the intelligence of babies and children. So let's take a closer look at the timeline of this neuromyth. It all started in 1993 when a scientist named Francis Rocher conducted a study with college students. In the experiment, Rocher divided the students into three groups and played one group a clip of Mozart, one group a recording of a monotone voice, and one group just silence. And after listening, the students took a spatial reasoning test. The results showed that those who had listened to Mozart scored higher on the test. While the study was small with really questionable methods, its impact on the world was huge. The study, after the study was published, the Mozart effect began gaining popularity all throughout the 90s and early 2000s. People took the idea of that listening to classical music could make you smarter and ran with it. This neuromyth gained popularity throughout the 90s and early 2000s because people were attracted to the idea that something as simple as listening to music could make you smarter. People began assuming that playing classical music for babies could make them smarter, even though children had never even been studied in the experiment. It even went so far that in 1998, the mayor of Georgia bought thousands of classical CDs for every newborn in the state, which ending, ended up costing them around $105 thousand dollars. Now, there's two main reasons why this neuromyth gained so much popularity. First, the media. After the original study was published, thousands of articles spread false information about the Mozart effect, claiming that listening to classical music could make babies and children smarter. Furthermore, the Mozart effect became even more popular when people realized that they could make money off spreading this false information. Books and CDs were sold everywhere, all discussing the supposed power of the Mozart effect. In fact, Baby Einstein's Baby Mozart video was recognized as the top selling video of the year in 1998. Now, the second reason for this popularity was that the was the general concern over the education system in the United States. A study found that states with more problematic education systems were more likely to publish articles about the Mozart effect. In the end, people were looking for a quick fix to poor education and were excited about the fact that something as simple as listening to classical music could help their kids. Now let's talk about how this neuromyth was eventually debunked. Despite several studies in 1994, 1995, and 1997 trying to replicate Rocher's original experiment, each study failed to show significant results in favor of the Mozart effect. A specific study in 2002 involved listening to three listening conditions, silence, an upbeat Mozart piece, and a slow piece by a different composer. Then they had the subjects take a spatial reasoning test, and the studies found that there was no link between listening to music and spatial intelligence, and that they were short-term effects attributed wholly to just being more awake after listening to upbeat music. So why is this important today? The Mozart effect definitely has a huge impact on society today. I know as a baby and toddler, my mom would play me classical music because she thought it would make me smarter. And there are millions of other parents who believe the same thing. So how is believing this neuromyth dangerous? Well, for starters, it promotes a false sense of intelligence. It's also a huge waste of resources like time and money. Just look at Georgia. They put so much money into a completely false idea that classical music could make the citizens of their state smarter. So I encourage you to ask your friends and family if they've heard of the Mozart effect and if they believe in it. And if they do, I hope you'll teach them a little bit about 
the consequences of believing these neuromyths. Thank you.